Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are keeping on, keeping on with our Irish theme or our things you could make for St. Patrick's Day that would be delicious theme, but you could make these at any time. We're making bangers and mash. Now, listen, I put the poll out to on Instagram to you guys to tell me what to make. These were all requested by you. So if you are in part of Ireland where you don't make the don't come at me, but it is a delicious recipe, so who really cares? However, there are things you need to know about me. And if you know me well, which I know my best friend's watching this right now, and she's gonna finish the sentence before I can even finish it myself, but if you've been watching me for a long time, you already know this. I love sausage, and I love spuds. I love a potato. You, you, you already know this about me, but I love sausage. I love a pork sausage. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite. So these two together is absolutely heaven. I would put a ring on it. Let's make bangers and mash. The mash is already in here. Yukon gold potatoes boiling in salted water until very tender. Let those go because we don't need to do anything with those for now. I've got a cast iron skillet here. Let's add a drizzle of olive oil. We are going to sear and cook some sausage. Okay? I like a pork sausage, but you do you. What accompanies this what gets dripped, drizzled, and poured all over this is a delicious, rich onion gravy. It is like a thick French onion soup, but better because it's thick. It's delicious. Everything together is so phenomenal. Doesn't actually require a ton of ingredients at all. Got your sausage, you got your spuds, you got, um, I was gonna say apples. <laughs> Onions, beef stock, a little red wine, some flour, some butter, some oil, some salt, some Worcestershire sauce, and you'll need a little bit of heavy cream for your mash. Salt and pepper. Did I say salt and pepper? I meant to say salt and pepper. If I didn't say it, well, here you go. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this onion. I'm probably just gonna end up using one. I don't think I need two. And I am going to peel and thinly slice, very thinly slice. I'm gonna show you like that. like the sound of that. I likey likey. And now I just take the tip of my knife and I pierce in just a couple places just so that there's no pockets of fat that will explode. Put your screen on because um, I just mopped and I am not about to play games because um, I will clean all day and then I'll cook and then I'll do it again. Um, my sweater! I left my sweater out! <laughs> but listen, listen. What had happened was, I'm trying to be real bold for you, because what had happened was, it was very warm out today, right? It was a nice 64 day, degree day. I wore short sleeves, because I'm like, well, it's a beautiful day. Did my brain think it's still February and the temp is gonna drop and you turn the heat off? Absolutely not, of course not. Because in my brain, it was 64 degrees. I went and got my hair highlighted. I went and put on some fake tan because in my brain, might as well be May, okay? Then I came down here and the temperature said 59 degrees and I was very humbled. <laughs> so I put on my sweater. You know what, let's do a Nona style. Like this. You know, like this. Like this. Technically it's Joe's sweater, his hoodie. No one's gonna tell them. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and sear these. And they need to cook pretty much all the way through, so let those go. The sausage are looking gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. By the way, if you don't wanna like cook them in, in, the, in the skillet with the oil and all that, because I understand, you can just throw them in a hot oven. Get rid of some of that fat, because you really don't need it, but there's a lot of really good stuff happening underneath, which we want. And I also want just a little dab of butter. Come on, little one. A little bit of butter. Get that all melty in there. This is gonna be so good. Lots of brown bits from the sausage in the bottom of that skillet is goodness. Let me just tell you, it is goodness. I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of salt. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cook these until they develop really good color and they soften. All wonderful stuff. 
it shouldn't take too long. Onions are looking fantastic. You really want that nice rich color. I'm adding some garlic. Garlic, garlic, garlic goes in everything. What can I say? What can I say? Give that like a minute. You really just want to cook out that raw garlic flavor. I gotta tell you, because we're, you know, real friends here. Um, I have been on this new kick lately because, you know, mid 30s, I'm a mid 30 queen, and I decided I'm gonna be an adult and I'm gonna stop drinking so much coffee, I'm gonna just drink a decaf in the afternoon. My adult self does not like it, okay? So if you see me here yawning a little bit, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I mean, not about the decaf, but I will not be yawning. I just don't have that much pep in my step because I'm low on caffeine. Anyway, that looks good enough. You just need like 30 seconds to a minute. A little bit of flour, a little bit of flour. It's gonna thicken up that gravy and make it absolutely luscious and delicious. You don't need any additional fat. There's plenty of butter throughout those onions. Just give everything a really good stir so there's no big clumps of flour sitting anywhere. You see how it's kind of disappeared? Because it's clinging on to the fat and moisture of the onions. It's a good thing, my friend. Some wine, you don't wanna add wine, you don't have to. But I do find that a little bit of red wine, a little dry red, really gives it lovely extra flavor. It gives you a little bit of an edge. It gives you a little bit of a sharpness. I'm gonna let that cook out for a minute. Add your beef broth. Now that's just gonna have to simmer and bubble for a few minutes. You want that to really thicken up. I do stop. A little Worcestershire sauce, a little Worcestershire, Worcestershire, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, did you know? A little pinch of salt, black pepper. And while that starts to cook and thicken and do its lovely, wonderful thing, we're gonna switch to mash. But I'm gonna clean up a tad bit because it is a bit of a situation in here. I'm gonna get some cream and some butter in a small saucepan and get those heated because you never wanna add cold liquid to warm potato because that's how you end up with the texture of wallpaper glue. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna do that. Ooh. Adding the butter and cream mixture to my mash. I made a small baby, hold on. There we go. I made a small baby mash, small baby mash portion because we've been filming all day. And not only we've been filming all day, I am Spud. Spud is who I am. And let me tell you, I will eat the entire pan. They need more salt for sure. And they definitely need black pepper. Yes, yes they do. Oh, that needs more cream. Definitely needs more cream. I do not like a thick mashed potato. In fact, Joe says that I make mine sometimes a little too loose, but I do not like it very thick. I like it nice and creamy. I don't mind the lump. I don't mind it nice and chunky, but I don't like it too thick. And slowly add your cream and butter mixture. I used Yukon Golds, by the way, because after talking to you guys through DMs, everyone told me that a nice, delicious Yukon Gold is preferred, and I aim to please, of course. Okay, gravy is, look at this. Look at the color of this gravy. I've tasted it for seasoning, and it's, I mean, it's honestly pretty much a 10 out of 10 situation. Dishy out of dishy situation, if you know what I'm saying. I need to chop just a tiny bit of parsley because I just feel like this is screaming for something green. It's merely just gonna be for a little bit of color. So we're gonna do a little mash, or a lot of mash, whatever your heart desires. You know what else I was gonna make with this and I just forgot? But I know you'll do it because, because you will, because you know better. You're gonna serve some little peas. Mm. 
I love spud. I said it before, I'll say it again. I love me spud. Okay? Dun dun dun. Now watch this. This is like the best part. Oh, come on. It's a come on, as my brother Sal would say. It's a come on. Okay, it's a come on, Jojo. A little green, just because it needs it. Listen, I'm not mad at myself right now. Can you just like take a very good look at this? Because this to me is like, I mean, if we're talking levels of perfection, you would have Mia up here, because Mia is the most perfect thing you've ever seen in your life, at least me. Then you've got Sazich and Mesh. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I really hate when I'm about to do this. I really do. Because it's gorgeous and I don't want to mess with it. But then again, but then again, mm, I knew that was going to happen. Listen. I make no apologies for how I eat because if you don't smoosh it all together, you ain't living. I said, that's delicious. I don't know how you could possibly go wrong. Sear sausages, a delicious gravy, and mashed potatoes with a full fat cream and salted butter. Heaven. Make it for St. Patrick's Day. Make it on Tuesday night. Mmm. Make it this weekend to celebrate life. LauraInTheKitchen.com has you covered with the recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye. This is insane.